Well, there's a decent chance that you once owned one of these type of bracelets. In fact, um, people from famous athletes to powerful world leaders wore these bracelets. They were very popular in the early 2000s, and the company that made them was a company called Power Balance, and they've since uh, gone out of business in the United States. A kind of funny story, um, the guys who started that company uh, were a, a couple of guys that I know pretty well. Um, I used to, well, one of them was a former student of mine, believe it or not, and without going into too much detail, there's a little story I can give you about the history of power balance, but you can look that up online. Um, the claim of power balance was that this part of the bracelet had a hologram, and I believe the packaging said something to the effect that the hologram could sync with your body's biorhythms if I've got it right, and that produces greater balance and athletic ability. So I don't know how many average folks can tell you how a hologram works, and I don't think I can tell you exactly what a biorhythm is. So there's something about stringing together words that aren't well understood that make it hard to doubt. For example, you can pick any of the words you've learned so far in this class, and if you put them together the right way, you can probably come up with a gimmick that sounds believable. For example, I have something you can add to the uh, steering column in your vehicle. It's called a vector torque resonance stabilizer. And I sell them for only $39.99. And when you put them on the steering column of your vehicle, they increase the response time between your effort to turn the wheel and the car's uh, response. Of course, that's all a bunch of hogwash. And if I were to make that claim and it was found to be invalid, then I'd be met with probably a major lawsuit. So when I bumped into um, one of the brothers that started this company not long after he had graduated college, I asked him how this uh, power balance is going to work. And back at that time, before the company was really up and rolling, it wasn't a bracelet, it was in the form of a baseball cap. So he had me stand like this. And I was very dubious of whether or not a hologram could give me better balance. He said, try standing just on one leg put both of your arms out and I'm gonna come down uh, on your left arm and push straight down and while I do that I want you to keep your shoulder rigid and in fact try to push up against me sort of like a like a tug-of-war contest to see who's gonna win and of course the person pushing down wins every time after all there's a lever arm if we consider your foot as the axis of rotation, then there's a lever arm, which we can measure this way, to go along with the external force, and that causes the person every time to tip over and they eventually have to put this foot down to catch themselves. So then he said to me, I've got this new product. It's a baseball cap. And the baseball cap has that little button at the top, and inside that button is a hologram. And that hologram is going to sync with your body's biorhythms and make it easier for you to balance. And I said, there's no way that's going to work. That doesn't sound like good science to me. And sure enough, he had me try it again. and with an axis of rotation directly below the midline of my body. Once again, there was a push. But this is the trick, and a lot of folks do this trick. This is a sort of a common type of, well, I'm not sure I would call it a con, but uh, doesn't fall too short of that. Instead of pushing straight down, 
you push mostly downward, but a little bit inward on this unsuspecting victim. And in this case, the person doesn't fall over. They can maintain balance. They hold their shoulders firm. They push with this arm against the external applied force. And it's not difficult to keep from putting that foot down and remaining balanced. But you can probably see what's going on here. This force lines up directly with the axis of rotation. And when a force sits in line with the line of the lever arm, then the net torque is equal to zero, and there's no twisting that takes place about this axis, and the person stays upright. But to this person, they mostly just feel the downward component of that force. They don't feel the inward component, and they can't tell the difference with the original case. Oh, and by the way, back in the original case, uh, some of you might be confused that I drew the lever arm from the shoulder out to the point. That's actually just the perpendicular component to the lever arm. I suppose I should have made the lever arm go from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied. But still, there's an angle. It isn't 90, but it also isn't zero. And so there is a non-zero torque in case one that makes the person tip over. So where else does this sort of um, concept apply? There's a demonstration I've seen before with a wheel and axle. So in our previous video with the yo-yo, we had an object, the yo-yo, with an outer radius of R2 and an inner radius of R1. So I've seen a sort of scaled up version of a yo-yo before. It looks something like this. It's a wheel and axle. And then there's a strap that's wrapped around the interior axle, and you can pull it. So if we look at it from its side, looking straight down this axis of rotation, it would look something more like this. And that wheel and axis axle contacts the ground. And then the question is, what's going to happen when I pull straight up with the string? So the string winds around and around and around, and I pull straight up. Is that going to make the wheel and axle travel along the desk to the left or to the right? I think everybody is going to agree the best prediction here is it rolls to the left. Well, as long as there's some friction here at the uh, desk anyway, right? Now, if this is totally slick and you pull straight up, I'm not so sure. So if we consider not so much the center of mass of the wheel and axle, but if we consider the contact point at the desk as the axis of rotation, then we have, in this case, a lever arm that points from the axis to the point where the string is making contact with the inner spool. So there's some angle between these two. It isn't 90, but it also isn't 0 or 180, so there is a net torque. And if you use the right-hand rule, the right-hand rule goes something like this. If I have vector A and a vector B, and I put them together tail to tail, and then I rotate, I point the fingers of my right hand in the direction of vector A and curl my fingers until they now point in the direction of vector B, if I did that with my right hand, my thumb would be pointing toward me. So the vector A cross B if the x-axis is in the plane of the page and the y-axis is in the plane of the page, then the z-axis is coming straight out of the page, and the vector a cross b would be a vector that points out of the page. Hopefully you see that with the right-hand rule. Whereas, take the same two vectors, 
and figure what's the uh, product of vector oops b cross a. Well, now point your fingers of your right hand in the direction of b, and start to curl your fingers in a circular direction until your fingers then point in the direction of a, and now your thumb should point away from you. So b cross a does not equal a cross b. So there's one difference between vector math and scalar math. When it comes to scalars, there's no difference between xy or yx, or ab versus ba. But when it comes to taking the cross product of vectors, you get the opposite result based on the order of operation. So in any case, how do we apply the right-hand rule to R cross F? Isn't that the equation for torque? Torque is equal to R cross F. So point your fingers in the direction of vector R and rotate the fingers of your right hand until they assume a position pointing upward and you see that your thumb points toward you which is consistent with counterclockwise rotation which agrees with our prediction that the system will rotate to the left. Now let's make the question a little trickier. Here's where I often get um, two different answers. If we take and pull with the strap that's wrapped around this way, which way is the whole system going to roll across the desk? So again, think of this as our axis of rotation. Is it going to roll to the left, or is it going to roll to the right? I can understand why some people think it's going to roll to the right. If I pull to the right, then that should correspond to motion to the right. But then again, there is some force of friction acting here, and maybe that pulls back to the left. Or, even more so, if I were to pull this way, that would tend to make this whole thing want to unwind, just like people who pull their toilet paper off the bottom of the roll instead of the top of the roll. By the way, shame on those people. Um, so if the tendency is to rotate counterclockwise, then I could see why you'd want to argue that it goes to the left. Uh, what a conundrum. Well, we can solve this quite easily if we just consider that torque is the vector cross product of R and F. So F is very clearly a vector that points to the right. Now what's our lever arm vector? Well, that's a vector that points from the axis of rotation to the point where the force is applied. The angle in this case is 90 degrees, but the real key here is that it's R cross F. It is not F cross R, and those would be two different things, right? So the right-hand rule says point your fingers in the direction of R and rotate them until they now point in the direction of F, and to do that, the fingers of your right hand should be curling in a clockwise direction. And so if the system rotates in a clockwise direction, then the whole system rotates to the right. When this demonstration is done live, the final um, illustration is to show how you can pull on the string so that it neither rolls to the left nor to the right. So how would you go about that? So there's the radius of the inner spool. We're considering the contact point with the ground as the axis of rotation. So if you pull on the string like this, let's see, make a line that goes from the axis of rotation, touches the tip of the inner spool and continues on tangent to that inner one, then this vector could represent force if you happen to pull exactly in that direction. 
and then this vector right here would be the lever arm. And so you can see that this is a case where the angle between the two is zero degrees. The lever arm and the force point in the same direction, and whenever the angle is zero degrees, then we have a torque that's equal to an amount of force times a magnitude of a lever arm times a sine of zero, but the sine of zero itself is zero, so we have a torque of zero. And what happens is the system doesn't roll in either direction. It just unwinds in place as the string length gets greater and greater and greater.